Revelation 6. Revelation 6. Good to be here this morning. Good to be back. Missed everybody. Although I thought... I'm getting there. I'm slow today. It's the, it's the climate. Yeah. After being up at 12,000 feet, I just find there's too much air down here. Too much oxygen. And let's see here. Revelation 6. Turn your Bibles there. We'll read it. Well, Roy keeps us closely guarded. Make sure nobody comes in here shooting. Uh, let's see here. And that. And that. Where were we? We were on the sixth seal, weren't we? Six seal. Let me let me go to verse nine and uh, kind of walk in that direction while I get this loaded up here. The Bible says, "When they had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them uh, that were slain." Now I want you to think about this: for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. Now I can tell you that. This has already been partially fulfilled throughout the last 2,000 years. Why did they kill Paul? Why did they kill Stephen? Stephen being the first martyr. Why, did, why was Saul of Tarsus going to Damascus to round up these Jewish people why was he doing that? It was because they held the testimony of Jesus Christ and he was hoping for them to be killed over it. That's what he was doing. He was wanting them taken back to Jerusalem, a trial held for them or over them, and then they would have been summarily executed for one reason. It's not that they were some danger to society. It wasn't that the Christians up there all had, what was it Biden said, AR-14s, which don't exist. Um, was it because that they planned an insurrection government? No, it was nothing like that. It's because the Jewish leadership, the Sanhedrin, felt that they were a threat to them over the Jews. So here they are teaching and preaching Sister Helen and Brother Chris. Good morning to you. No, no, not, they're not teaching Brother Chris. They're teaching Jesus Christ. And uh, let's see here. One more button. No, I got two more buttons to push. Uh, come on. There we go. We're almost there. We're almost up and running. Ta-da! There we go. And do that. There we go. But anyway, they were a threat because of the testimony, but because for the word of God. And here's the big question. Would you die for your Bible? Would you die for your Bible? Okay. A it's a serious, honest question. People die, have died in Russia, China, North Korea, Iran, other Islamic extremist states. They have died in Europe during the Dark Ages. And it was 100% because of the Word of God. Those Christians would not accept the authority of the Pope of Rome. They would not accept it. And they, their belief was sola scriptura. 
only the word of God. That is all we're going to believe is the word of God. So if the Pope says, worship Mary, bow before this idol, pray to Mary for salvation, do what the Pope says, do what the priest says, not going to have it. Who was John Wycliffe? Does anybody know? English. Yep. And what was his occupation? Roman Catholic priest. He was a Catholic priest in England that saw the abuses of other priests. He knew priests would wait for some old guy to die. And as soon as he died, that priest would go to that widow's house and tell her, your husband is screaming in purgatory right now. And he needs to be prayed out. He needs a mass held for him. And if you don't do it, he's going to be there probably another thousand years. And the poor widow would say, well, I don't, I don't know what to do. Well, it's going to cost. I don't have any money. Okay, well, you have land. You have this cow. So turn that over to us and we'll say a mass for your husband so that we can reduce his time, not get him in heaven, reduce his time in purgatory. They would literally, exactly what the Bible says, they would steal widows' houses. And Wycliffe knew that scripture. And he watched it happen in front of his very eyes. He knew that if the people of England knew what the word of God said, that they would come out of that and be made free by the truth. So he set about to translate from, and what he had was the Latin. He set about to translate from the Latin into English a copy of the New Testament for those people. And it was going to be for public reading, something that was not even done in the Catholic Church in those days. They would have a reading of the Word of God. What language was it read in? Latin. And if, and if the poor people there sitting in that church were not educated to know Latin, they would have no idea either what the priest was saying behind the altar or what he was reading from the scriptures. They would not have a clue what he said. It was like this magic secret language that only the priests can say it and only the priests can know what it says. And so John Wycliffe, having translated a majority of it, I think he died and his students finished the rest, and then having it published, they ex the Catholic Church had a trial over him. Now, after he's dead, and they find him guilty of heresy and blasphemy, they exhume his bones and bring them out and burn the bones to ashes and then scatter the ashes down the river, which runs into the sea, so that John Wycliffe has no final resting place. But does that matter? Mm -mm. John Wycliffe, I believe John Wycliffe's already at home with the Lord. Amen? So that's, listen, as it, as Solomon said in Ecclesiastes, the thing that hath been is the thing that shall be. And this course is a prophecy. And I believe that as time goes on, people will continue to give their life for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. Now, Verse 12, good. The sixth seal, verse 12. When I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth. Uh, boy, underline that. Stars of heaven fell unto the earth because... If we don't believe the Bible and we don't stick with it, 
and believe what the Bible says about what stars really are, then we won't, we won't believe this. Because that used to be a, a mystery to me, is how do the stars fall to the earth? Because a lot of the stars that are up in the heavens, we know for a fact, in some cases, are 10 times as big as our sun. So how could they fall to the earth? How could that happen? Well, we're going to get into Revelation 12, other places in the Bible that tell us that the stars are angels. So when we see the stars falling to the earth, what's falling? The angels. Uh, and then he mentions the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. That's all in the scriptures and other places too. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. That's also quoted from, I believe, the book of Isaiah. And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Now, I've just spent the last week in the mountains. We left Denver thankfully, Monday morning, and we got on I-70 and we drove west. And just about as soon as you leave Denver, you're in the Rocky Mountains. And I took my time. Beautiful, beautiful drive. Beautiful mountains all over the place. You got waterfalls, you got the Colorado River. And I mean, it's just absolutely gorgeous. And... Um, it was Tuesday, we took Michaela up on top of this mountain in uh, Glenwood Springs, Colorado. Um, it's where Doc Holliday died, Chris. Yep, Doc Holliday, he died in Glenwood Springs. So they got an amusement park up on top of this mountain. And they have a, a roller coaster, it's like a single seat roller coaster that you control yourself, you can control the speed, thank you, Lee. And at the end of the ride, it takes you back up the side of this mountain. And I'm thinking about this as I'm going up. I'm writing sermons the whole week. And I'm thinking about this mountain that I'm riding up the side of, George. And I'm thinking, one of these days, this mountain won't be here. Look what it says. Every mountain and island were moved out of their places. How much power do you think it takes to move a mountain? Huh? If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea, and it shall be done. Okay? Yep. Um, physically, it would take a lot of power. Okay? But all it takes is faith. Every mountain and island were moved out of their places, and the kings of the earth, the great men, I want you to pay attention to this, kings of the earth, great men, rich men, chief captains, the mighty men, every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. Right now, there are what's called billionaire bunkers. There are companies that are buying out former missile silos and they're rehabbing them, fitting them with water supply, generator, nice apartments, food, games, sports, you name it. And it's all for the millionaire, billionaire class so that if some bad thing happens in the earth, these people can go to their millionaire bunker and hide out in there and be the ones who are still alive, I guess, after it's all over with. Like when the zombies come out or whatever. Yes, David. Continuity of government. It used to be Mount Weather in Virginia. It's actually under a hotel.
Yeah. Yeah. I hate to bring this up, but um, for some reason, uh, people now are talking about the possibility of a nuclear war with Russia. I don't like that. I don't like that. Um, but anyway, that's what's being brought up. But I, I can tell you, that millionaires are preparing for it. I can also tell you, this may sound strange, but I can take you to the scripture that says it. They're even looking at places beyond the earth to hide themselves. Beyond the earth. Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, all of these multi, multi billionaires are steadily working on ways for humans to escape this planet because they believe in their hearts that the sky is going to fall, Mother Nature is going to fail, the polar ice caps are going to melt, all this stuff they talk about. It, back in the 70s, it was global freezing. In the 90s, it was global warming. Now it's Climate change, you know, like going from summer to winter, winter to summer. But they're talking about some bad thing happening on the earth and that mankind is going to need to escape to other planets in the heavens. So we have telescopes up there that are looking now for possible planets that might support human life. Jeff Bezos, the owner of Amazon.com, he said, why do that when we can build, this was in the movie Elysium, when we can build like a big circular space station up just beyond the earth and build an atmosphere up there and take dirt up there and water and plant plants and have all these people live up there and we can get supplies from the earth and bring them up here. They're making, believe it or not, they're making all sorts of plans to get off of the, if, turn to, uh, I probably, probably read this a couple weeks ago. Turn to Amos and Obadiah. They're right next to each other. Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum. You find Amos... Look at chapter 9. Look at what God said in verse 1 of Amos 9. I saw the Lord standing upon the altar, and he said, Smite the lintel of the door, that the posts may shake, and cut them in the head, all of them. And I will slay the least of them with the sword. He that fleeth of them shall not flee away, and he that escapeth of them shall not be delivered. So it's talking about escaping God's wrath. And then he said, in verse 2, Though they dig into hell, then sh shall mine hand take them. He says, I don't care how low your bunker is. Though they climb up to heaven, thence will I bring them down. Though they hide themselves in the top of Carmel, I will search and take them out thence. And though they be hid from my side in the bottom of the sea, thence will I command the serpent and he shall bite them. And then Obadiah, verse 3, the pride of thine heart hath deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. Twice now. God has said, I don't care where you hide. You dig a hole all the way down to hell. Won't matter. You dig, if you climb all the way up to the heavens, it won't matter. I'm going to bring you down, back down to this earth, and I'm going to pour out my wrath on you, and there is nothing you can do to stop it. Nothing. Makes you glad you're saved. Amen? Because I haven't even started building my rocket yet. 
Not even close. Um, verse 16. And they said to the mountains and rocks of Revelation 6, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come and who shall be able to do what? Stand. Go to Galatians. Galatians 5, verse 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. Be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Turn to Ephesians chapter 6. <clears throat> um, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And then look in verse 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore. How many times does he say stand here? Stand, 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 stand. What did Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego do? In the day that Nebuchadnezzar said, bow. What did they do? They stood. Amen? One lady... <laughs> One lady, I use that term loosely, you had to see her. Last Saturday, I think, got into a conversation with me and she asked me a question, so I started giving her the answer. And finally, she said, you're taking too long. And I said, well, ma'am, you asked me a question and I'm a teacher. I can't just say yes. When it's something important, I'm going to give you reasons why you should believe what I'm saying. And she said, well, you're trying to push me. No, I'm just standing. I don't push people. I just, I'm standing still. I'm not moving. I'm not budging from what I believe. Because she didn't believe the gospel. Didn't want to believe the gospel. Uh, didn't want to believe the word of God. If you would have seen her, you would have understood why. Okay? You know, they, you know, judge no man. Okay, I get that. But some things are too obvious. And... Um, she finally, and she, she said, she, she started judging me. She said, what I don't hear from you is I don't hear any love. I don't hear any concern. I don't hear any care for people. And I had my phone in my hand, and I just started showing her pictures of people in Kenya. And I said, you're telling me I don't care for anybody. And she took one look at that. She patted me on the shoulder, and she said, well, it looks like you have a captive audience, and walked off. And I went, I want to chase after her. <clears throat> God's wrath is coming. And while he shakes, see this shaking is about shaking loose everything that won't stand. But God says he's going to strengthen our feeble knees. And he's going to cause us to stand when everything else falls. Remember what 2 Thessalonians says. There shall come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. And I believe on that day, a lot of people are going to fall. And I think literally. I think it's literal. Going to fall. Because the mountains are going to do it. The stars are going to do it. God's people are not going to do it. We're going to keep standing amen i can tell you you know i i get renewed every year that i go hang around these crazy ufo people i do i get renewed in my bible i'm thankful for it i'm glad i have it i'm glad i can give people the truth 
and they can't say anything against it. The only thing they can say is, Bible's written by men and make up some fantasy story in their mind of why they don't want to believe the Word of God. But I'm glad I have this book. Amen? Um, that was the bell, wasn't it? All right. Study Isaiah 34. That's your homework for next week. Isaiah 34. <clears throat> and, and I will tell you to pray for a man that I met who was, like I said, he was a, said he had gone to seminary, he had pastored a church for five years, but he didn't, he didn't believe any of that now. He was, he was well beyond that now. And to pray for this lady that rejected the Word of God, uh, pray for them, because they need it. They need prayer. I prayed for them. Father, we ask your blessings on your word, and we do thank you for it. We pray, dear God, Lord, that you would open up our eyes. Bless the morning service this morning. I pray, dear God, that you would lead us, that you would guide us. Your Holy Spirit would come in and comfort us this morning. In the days that we're living in, these are unsettled times. We've been around unsettled people. We live in an unsettled world. And, Father, I can tell you, you know this better than any of us do. This world is mad. They're crazy. They're out of their mind. Where once the stability of the Word of God and your commandments used to be in the heart of our people, now it's not. People are so far removed from that. Father, just bless our church. Bless those who are joining with us this morning. And Lord, Father, we are grateful that you have strengthened our feeble knees enough to be able to stand for the word of God in these last days. Bless it, we pray in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen.